Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I haven't filmed a talking video in a while just because I've been super busy, um, but a lot of people have requ been requesting videos regarding AP exams, so I decided since it's already pretty much mid-April, I should film and post more videos about AP exams because it just makes sense. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing an AP exam Q&A this week so i'd like you guys to um if you want me to answer your questions about ap exams type in the comments q and a and then so i know that's for the q and a and you don't just want me to answer it in the comments so just type q and a and then your question so today's video is going to be all about how to prepare for ap exams in general so you guys probably know, but I already have a how to get a five on this AP exam playlist. It has, I think, eight of them, should be eight of them. So if I haven't talked about a specific AP class, then you can still follow the tips in this video because these tips are just for all AP classes in general, non-specific tips for AP exams, if that makes sense. I'll just give you guys some tips on how to study for AP exams and pass or get a five on them or four. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy this video and find it helpful. And if you do, leave a thumbs up so that I know and so that other people can find this video. Thanks for watching and let's get into the video. Okay, so my first tip, my number, number one tip, my number one tip is to completely, I know this is, gonna, this is going to sound crazy, but pretend like you literally did not learn anything the entire school year. What do I mean by that? Well, the number one mistake that students make when studying for the AP exam, I didn't do an experiment or anything, but I've heard this from a lot of people, is that they assume that what they learn in school the entire year is going to be on the AP exam or is similar to the AP exam, when it's not usually at all. I'll just give an example. In my AP Psychology class freshman year, pretty much when I went to actually look at the AP prep book, like 50% of the prep book, I had no idea what they were talking about because I didn't learn that 50% during the school year. Like we learned different things that ended up not being on the AP exam. So what I'm saying is, I know this sounds kind of counterintuitive, but literally pretend like you didn't learn anything for your class this year. Obviously you have some knowledge, which is good, but do not rely, I repeat, do not rely on your teacher's resources or on your textbook. Just don't. Just completely forget like they exist. Pretend like you're self-studying for the AP exam without ever have taken, having taken the class. For every single AP exam that I took, I pretty much self-studied for it even though i took the class and it ended up being for every single subject so you need in order to get a five on the ap exam you need to follow the prep books the prep books are your number one friend okay so and you usually i 100 percent recommend getting at least one but at, you definitely should get two okay just in case because usually one prep book will have like some aspects covered and another one will have others. And usually you want to get the Barons and the Princeton Review, usually, but there are a lot of other ones like Cliff Notes or um, Five Steps to Five, etc. that you can get. Um, it really depends on the class. Get your prep books and what you should do is you need to read them. There is going to be a lot of minuscule information in there that you're going to think, oh, well, we didn't learn this in class, so this is probably not going to be on the AP exam. The people who wrote the prep books are experts. They know what's going to be on the AP exam. And if it's in the book, there is like an 80% chance that it's going to be on the AP exam. So you need to remember it. If there's a vocab term that you've never seen in your year of studying that subject, memorize it because it's probably gonna end up being on the AP exam. The next thing I really recommend to do is to do lots of practice tests. And especially for science and math. Practice tests are your friend, okay guys? You, before doing the AP exam, you should have taken at least two practice tests. At least, that's like the bare minimum. I recommend three or four. And you need to go over your mistakes. So don't just take a practice test like, oh, 
I got a four, well, oh well, you know, next time I'll do better. You need to go over all of your mistakes and on top of that, go over all of the questions that you weren't sure about. And then if you have time, go over every single question and read the explanations. And, and usually the practice tests in the prep books are pretty um, similar to the actual AP exam. And I find that the Princeton Review practice tests are usually really similar and the Barons are usually a little less similar. They're usually harder than what the actual AP exam is going to be like and they're usually more specific. Also, you can definitely find practice tests online. There's usually at least a couple of multiple choice practice tests for each AP exam that you can find like from 2005 and like 1995 or something like that. Um, and then also there's usually, and there's always FRQs available starting from like this year, like 20 or last year, 2016, back until like the 1990s somethings. And you should at least go over at least three of those FRQs. Um, preferably like more recent ones because that will really help you understand what the FRQs are going to be like and usually the 50% of the grade. So they're pretty crucial. And there's a kind of strategy to the FRQs that you need to figure out. Um, and the way you do that is by reading the student responses to the FRQs, the best student responses, and just kind of read what they said, and then look at what the grader wrote, and you'll figure out what they were looking for and why that student got that high score. You should start preparing around late March, early April latest. If you haven't started preparing yet though, that's totally okay. You also shouldn't be like panicking, but you probably should be panicking <laughs> a little bit. Um, but you can still get a five if you start right now, like this minute, but you should not. You literally need to start right now. So you know, get your prep book and read over it. And I recommend reading over it at the first time, kind of skim over it and then read over it and take detailed notes just so that you can like go over them the couple days before the AP exam. Or if you don't want to take notes, then just highlight and write in the margins of the book and then just kind of skim through it a couple days before the AP exam. Um, and then after you've done that, read tons, um, not read, do tons of practice tests and go over your mistakes. Once you've done all that, you pretty much should be getting a five. But however, 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 that is, if you actually learned everything in the prep book, there's probably a good chance that you didn't just by skimming through it the first time and taking notes on it the second time and going over your mistakes on the practices. You're probably going to get a four just with that knowledge. But if you really want to get a five, you're going to have to go over the material again. That's when you would start going over your second prep book and you'd start going over the material on that one and start memorizing all that information. Also, in some classes cases, there are some really great outlines that you should use instead of a prep book, but that depends on the resources available online. So you should do some research and try to see if there are any packets or cram packets or study guides online for the AP exam. For instance, I have found like really good ones for APUSH and AP Gov that I used instead of an extra prep book that you can use. Um, but that really just depends. But the point is you should usually have at least two resources like a prep book and a prep book or a prep book and an outline that you're really going over because that way you're not probably going to miss any material that might be on the AP exam. So now that you've done that, everything, you've read the prep books slash outlines, you've done the practice test, you pretty much should be ready to go, but you're still not 100% ready. If you're taking a humanities class, you should Take, write down the important vocab or important facts or important anything really, um, you know, on flashcards or in Quizlet and then constantly be reviewing them so that you don't forget them because that's really crucial. Then also if you're taking a history, you should definitely choose like five main topics. Um, for instance, since I took AP US History, you can choose like um, how women's rights evolved over time or just like women in general um, and their um, involvement in society. You can do the Civil War, you can do World War I, World War II, uh, Spanish-American War. Get a blank sheet of paper or a notebook paper, write the topic on top like Civil War, and then literally just start going over facts and 
people and just things that changed the causes of the Civil War, effects of the Civil War, what was the Civil War, like who was fighting who, you know, who were important famous generals, maybe some quotes, maybe some dates, facts, names, etc. Why should you be doing this? For the FRQs. Now, you really want to blow their minds on the FRQs. That means bringing in tons of facts, statistics, quotes, dates, names, um, anything that you can remember. And if you choose like three to five main topics and you constantly review those facts and statistics, you'll be able to pull them from your memory and use them during the FRQs. And at the same time, you're killing two birds with one stone because you're um, memorizing information about the most important like key things in the A push class. So you're also going to do better on the multiple choice. Um, and that's just an A push example, but that can be for any, like for instance, I'm taking world history this year, so I'll do the same thing with world history. And, um, and you can do that with European history. Also, when it comes to buying AP prep books, Princeton, the Princeton review in general tends to be better for humanities classes. However, I noticed that it's not that great for AP World History, at least in my opinion, and that the Barons is better for AP World History. Um, but in general, it seems that the Princeton Review, at least in my experience so far, has been better for humanities classes, um, but that the Barons is better for like science and um, like math classes. But that's just in general. Um, when it comes to between those two companies, also Cliff Notes is good for science. Um, as well, I've heard at least. So yeah, that was just about the prep books. The last tip I have um, for you guys is to make a schedule for your AP exam prep. And the way I make a schedule, I'll actually make a separate video about that, but pretty much you want to kind of prioritize which class you think AP exam will take the most time that you need to prepare, which one will take the least time if you're taking more than one. It really depends on how many you're taking. And what you need to do is get a calendar of the next month and write down and just choose one topic for each day. That way you're going to get really immersed into the subject because if you just do like 30 minutes of A push, 30 minutes of AP stats, and 30 minutes of AP calc in a day, you're not gonna really like fully immerse yourself into the subject and understand it. So the way I prepared at least is I would have like chunks where it would be like three days of just like AP Psych and then three days of just AP US History and then three days of just um, like whatever, I don't know, um, AP Biology. And, and as you're getting closer to the AP exam, the first one you want the last three days to be just for that AP exam. And then after that you can do that accordingly. But I'll show you guys how I made or am making my own plan and um, well I already made it but I'm gonna show you guys how I made it um, and then you know so what I did so you guys can also like just see how I make my AP prep plan so schedule so yeah but yeah those were just tips that I had for preparing for AP exams I hope that they were helpful to you guys um, and you know that you can get something out of this video and yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and good luck on your ap exams hopefully you will get the score that you want so yeah so i'll see you guys next time bye guys